Hello, this is Joe Ix, Professor in Chief of the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at UC San Diego. I will be discussing the publication Effect of Etelcalcitide versus Sinacalcit on Serum Parathyroid Hormone in Patients Receiving Hemodialysis with Secondary Hyperparathyroidism, a Randomized Clinical Trial by Jeffrey Block and colleagues. The study was published in JAMA. I selected this article because the study evaluates the relative efficacy and safety of, IV, of the IV uh, calcimimetic etelcalcitide and the oral calcimimetic sinicalcet on serum parathyroid hormone or PTH concentrations in patients receiving hemodialysis. Secondary hyperparathyroidism is a complication of CKD and end-stage renal disease, contributing to extracellular calcification and associated with cardiovascular mortality. Etelcalcicide is a synthetic peptide and was shown to be more effective than sinicalcet at lowering PTH concentrations in patients receiving hemodialysis with secondary hyperparathyroidism. <clears throat> this study was a head-to-head -head comparison trial evaluating etelcalcicide et against sinicalcet and conducted across 164 sites in the US, Canada, Europe, Russia, and New Zealand. This phase three randomized double blind, double dummy active, uh, active trial included adult patients re receiving hemodialysis with serum PTH levels greater than 500 picograms per ml. Exclusion criteria included patients who had not received sinicalcet during the three months prior to the first screening and the use of commercial sinicalcet was prohibited during the study. All patients received standard of care with phosphate binders and calcitriol or active vitamin D analogs. Etelcalcitide was administered intravenously with oral placebo for 26 weeks. IV study drug was administered three times a week and oral drug was administered daily. Mean average weekly dose of etelcalcitide was 15 milligrams and median average daily sinicalcid dose was 51 milligrams. The primary endpoint was non-inferiority of etelcalcitide achieving a greater than 30% reduction from baseline in mean pre-dialysis PTH concentrations during week 20 to 27 of the, of the study. Secondary endpoints included superiority achieving biochemical endpoints of both greater than 50 and greater than 30% reductions in PTH and self-reported nausea or vomiting. Key findings. 683 patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive IV etelcalcitide and oral placebo, or alternatively, oral sinicalcet and IV placebo. The patients had a mean age of 55 years and 56% were men. There were a number of adverse events. Of the 338 patients treated with etelcalcitide, 62 reported nausea, 45 reported vomiting. Of the 348, I'm sorry, the 341 patients treated with sinicalcet, 77 reported nausea and 47 reported vomiting. The study showed a greater than 30% reduction in mean PTH concentrations over 27 weeks. And among patients receiving hemodialysis with secondary hyperparathyroidism, Use of etelcalcitide was not inferior to sinicalcet in reducing serum PTH concentrations over 27 weeks. It also met superiority criteria. Future studies are needed to assess clinical outcomes as well as long-term efficacy and safety. Here are some of my main thoughts on this important study. Firstly, this is the first study to describe the use of, new, of a new IV sinicalcimimetic uh, in hemodialysis patients in a head-to-head -head comparison with sinicalcid. The study was designed as a non-inferiority trial for PTH lowering greater than 30% from baseline to weeks 20 to 27. Not only did it convincingly show non-inferiority, but it demonstrated superiority for this endpoint with 68% in the etelcalcitide group reaching the primary endpoint versus 57% in the sinicalcid group. It was also hoped that etelcalcitide would result in less nausea and vomit vomiting relative to sinicalcet, which is a major side effect of sinicalcet, but this was not realized in the present study. 
Etalcalcetide resulted in more hypocalcemia and in turn, greater use of calcium-based oral phosphate binders and higher doses of active vitamin D compounds during the trial. And there was numerically more heart failure events in those treated with etalcalcetide than those with sinicalcet, 10 in the etalcalcetide group versus two in the sinicalcet group. These small numbers are in fact small, but this important uh, finding should be evaluated in future follow-up studies. How will this study impact the current state of patient management? Management of hyperparathyroidism with sinicalcet in hemodialysis patients is challenging. The PTH has a very short serum half-life. Half Thus, missing even a single dose of sinicalcet often results in large shifts in PTH con concentrations on monthly lab monitoring. This makes managing of PTH in hemodialysis patients quite challenging. Etalcalcetide provides an opportunity to use an IV drug at the end of dialysis. It has a half-life of 48 to 72 hours, and so this may lead to more consistent and more predictable changes in PTH. Etalcalcetide is the first IV calcimimetic and only the second calcimimetic on the market. This may open the door for additional agents targeting CKD, MBD moving forward. With that said, I also think that there are important remaining questions. What questions remain unanswered? Etalcalcetide binds the calcium sensing receptor at a unique site relative to sinicalcet. When sinicalcet binds, it requires the presence of calcium to bind and exert its actions in suppressing PTH release. Importantly, this is not the case for etalcalcetide. This may allow more dramatic PTH lowering and hypocalcemia even when serum calcium concentrations are low. In the present study, hypocalcemia was more frequent in the etalcalcetide group. As this drug is used in clinical practice, future studies are needed to understand the frequency and severity of hypocalcemia in non-trial settings. As etalcalcetide led to greater use of calcium binders and active vitamin D compounds, as well as heart failure events were numerically higher, future studies are required to evaluate the effects of etalcalcetide on long-term outcomes, including cardiovascular disease.